Hello, welcome to Mondo Market TV. I'm here on The Hourglass, which is a fantastic new show. I'm your host, Logan, and we're here with the wonderful Jody McCraney Rush Show. Yay! <laughs> so, all of you watching, you should share, comment. We have a giveaway. It's a surprise, it's fantastic. I'm so excited. <laughs> Now, Jody, we're covering what amazing topics today? We are talking about slumping webs, which are, but before that, we need to have our ceremonial starting. Ready? Oh, we have to do the hourglass. <laughs> There's a reason we call it the hourglass, folks. We have this wonderful little hourglass it's here. It's an hour of glass fusing fun. And Woo! here we go. Yay, Three, let's two. get started. This is to keep me from talking all day. We'll see if it works. And she will. And I will. Our so we are talking about slumping webs today and truthfully it should be called the draping web because we're using it to drape things but a draping web sounds like something you find when you dust instead of something you find in your studio so I call it a slumping web and I know that it's probably not the true, but we're just, we're gonna go with slumping web. So a slumping web is a, a bunch of things, basic things that you add together, and then you can mix and match them to make any kind of configuration at all, ever. So let me just show you what is involved with this. So the first thing you need is a platform. And the platform we're using is a, a ceramic tile and it's been cut into an octagon shape and then notched all those little notches right there um, and you can see them around the outside edge so the notches are designed to hold wire so keep that in mind and for one second and we'll show you what happens next hold that a wobbler that's what hosts are for. Yay! So then, once you have your platform, you need a tower. And we have two different towers that we're gonna be working with today. We have um, a round stainless steel one with holes in it, and the tower goes in the center of your tile, of your platform. And then we also have one that is made, it's a square one that's made with um, stainless steel welded uh, wire mesh. Um, and it, goes, it can also go in the center of the platform. But you can get really different effects with the two of these things. So then the other things that we have um, will work with these, we have little nuts. And these are actually useful, they're not necessary, but they are useful and they keep the wire from um, sliding through the little notches. We have stainless steel wire, lots of it. We have uh, shelf paper, um, and this comes in handy, you'll see why. We have a stapler, and of course various tools, and then we have these handy little things um, that I call slumping sticks. Ha! Huh? Isn't that sn a fun name? So these are actually just super skinny strips of ceramic tile, and we'll, we'll even do you a close-up here of it. Um, so they're just really cut very thin, and what we do is we can use these uh, as a different way to make part of the, the slumping web. And then the last thing we need is something to elevate the platform slightly so that we can work with it. So what I've got here under my platform right oh. there are um, some, these are just little kiln furniture, but you can also use chopped up fire brick. So we start with our kiln furniture and what I like to do actually is leave the, is use this side of the platform up and kiln wash it because then I don't have to worry about using shelf paper on it because I'm, I'm, I'm very thrifty, <laughs> read cheap, and I don't want to use up my shelf paper if I don't need to. So what we can do is we take our platform, we take our tower, and then we can take our stainless steel wire and create, let's create, a slumping web, shall we? Oh, speaking we? of webs, Sheila Knight here says, I have many draping webs with occupants. <laughs> right? Me too, actually. <sighs> there are quite a few that live in my studio, and I don't really notice them until people come over because they're just, you know, they hang out with me, and it's cool. We're all friends in, until they jump into the kiln, and then it's kind of sad news, but... And Sheila, it's nice to hear your name. I'm glad you're here for the, the new adventure. 
Okay, I've managed to tie myself into a knot first thing. <laughs> okay, so here we go. I'm gonna cut off, I'm gonna start cutting off some stainless steel wire because it's easier to handle if it's in smaller chunks. Okay. Real fast, okay. we have a question from right. John okay. Ferranda. Uh, he's asking if this is floor tile. Um, yes, it is floor tile. It's, but you can use any kind, I mean, you can use, ideally you want to use something that is a fairly higher quality so that it doesn't like fall apart in your kiln. But for the most part, um, floor, ceramic tile is all fired to a much higher temperature than glass is. So I have not had any trouble. The only thing I have had difficulty with is um, the really thick terracotta tile from Mexico. And I can't, salt, Saltillo, I think is what it's called. So I use these, um, the higher fire ones, and I haven't had any trouble at all with those. And then I cut it on my tile saw, and you could cut it in any shape you like. Um, I like this shape because it is, because I like symmetrical things. It's, <laughs> it has nothing to do with art. It's just my OCD, sorry. I like symmetrical stuff. So we'll cut a bunch of these guys. Don't poke my eye out. I see I'm you waving to, that wire towards right. me. First safety <sighs> rule, where are your glasses? You have glasses. I have glasses, but that doesn't mean you can't stab my eye out. We okay. also have a few comments. All right. From Debbie, it's so great to see you and know it will now be a weekly event. So actually, Debbie, for the first and through the end of the year, it's gonna be every other week. And then in January, we do go weekly. Um, and we just, we needed to kind of get up to speed and take care of a few other things so we could clear the schedule. Yes. But we're hoping that this time works well, the later in the day kind of thing. We also okay. have a few more comments. Okay. I'm sorry. I no, keep go ahead. <laughs> well, you keep talking while I so, talk. It's Eric from uh, Colorado, I believe, says, okay. is, asks, is there a minimum kiln height for this technique? Um, well, that's a very good question. So you should measure how tall your kiln is. So um, you can adjust the height of this particular process, um, particularly if you're, do, if you're making your own cages, right? Like this thing, because this is made with, here, let's put this on the close up so they can see the if you can see, that is actually constructed, it's one that I constructed. So you could make that centerpiece any height that you need it to be for um, your kiln height. My kiln is, my glass kiln that I use this in is, I think maybe 10 inches deep. Um, so you can measure it, measure from the shelf to the top of the kiln, and then if you have elements that protrude down into the kiln, which I do, then you have to subtract that from the, the measurement. And you don't want to um, get it too close because it will melt too fast, but it will also stick to your, you definitely don't want it to stick to your elements. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I've started by um, putting the wire through the top pole and then back around through the bottom Oop. and then folding it back over. So this is just a very, we're, this is like not going to save your life on a cliff or anything, but it will be firm enough to hold the glass. Guest 701 asks, remind me what the cylinder form is made of. It's stainless steel. All right. All right. So look <laughs> now, if you look here, Am I, oh, perfect, if you look here. So I'm going down, over and down slightly. So I'm going to continue doing this so that I have um, a spiral shape. Did you, see, did you see me do that spiral shape? Spiral shape as we go. And some of you may remember um, that we did a similar, we did a similar thing in, um, uh, class, but this is just a little more complex version of it, and I've sort of added a few things because I really like that square cage deal, so that's new, and it's very versatile. John asks, is this porcelain or ceramic floor tile? It is ceramic. It's not porcelain. You, if you have access to porcelain, that would be an excellent choice. 
May I also direct your attention to this wonderful kit that we'll be selling on MondoMarketTV.com. Get yours now! <laughs> and that actually has, so if you don't want to make your own, and of, of course, who wants to make their own? Um, you can have me make it. <laughs> so anyway, we do have a kit. So look on here. You can see now I've gone, uh, it's in a, in a diagonal spiral shape down the side of the cylinder. Oh, it looks like one of Shelia Knight's uh, draping webs occupants. A little bit, right? And then uh, we do the other side the same way, but we start here and start over. And then I'll show you how to attach it to the platform. Hopefully we have enough. Um, Okay. Barbara Bobby says, hello from Plains, Montana. Hi, Barbara. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. And Nancy says, this is going to be so much fun. Love seeing you two together. We <laughs> think it's going to be fun, too. Uh, we're having fun, aren't we? Uh, so far, <laughs> if you see me kicker, you'll know we've stopped having fun. All right, here we go. So I, um, this is where you can uh, wrap the wire around, and you can either very firmly wrap it, which I do. Um, if you need to keep it in place a little bit tighter, this is where you use your little steel, your um, stainless steel nuts, and you can just tuck it right under there. Okay, so once we have, and you see I'm holding this um, platform, this cylinder in place very tightly, right? And if you look at the top, you can see now that we are starting, it does look like Sheila's, uh, some of her spider webs, right? So you can see we have that there. And what we want is we want a tension between the wires and the cylinder and the platform. And those wires don't have to be super heavy duty. They just have to be strong enough to survive a firing and hold it, um, hold the tension in place. So once we do that, then we want to cover that thing with fiber, with uh, shelf paper. You can use fiber paper if you like. If you use fiber paper, I use like a 1 32nd of an inch, um, but we are actually going to use, we're not using shelf paper. We are using, uh, uh, this is paper that is incredibly similar to shelf paper. Um, in fact, I use it for photo backdrops, and one time I almost put one, piece in the kiln thinking it was shelf paper. But the reason I'm doing that is so that we don't have to wear safety masks while we're doing this. Oh, it's very, not be fun? It is very <laughs> hot, actually. So we're, yes. we're trying to... Uh, Cheryl asks, how that. in the world do you find the time to come up with all of your creative ideas? <laughs> uh, well, I... We don't sleep. I don't sleep very much. I wish I did, but that's okay. Uh, Faye also says, never thought of using floor tile as a kiln shelf. Oh gosh, floor tile is really cool. Um, if you look also on this overhead, you can see, well next time we have an overhead, you can see um, those little octagon, like, um, they're not, they're hexagons, but they look like um, honeycomb. You can also use floor tiles, the back of floor tiles, as texture tiles. So you can um, fuse that texture right on your glass, which is really pretty cool. All right, let's see. Uh, John says, the notches in the side of the floor tile, brilliant, I think so. <laughs> yeah, it really helps. Um, the first couple times I tried using binder clips to hold the wire and bind, it will work instead of cutting the notches. But the binder clips um, relax quite a bit. They, they don't survive more than one firing. So they relax and then, so, you know, it's just not as good. So this, I like this. So here's what we're doing with our shelf paper. We are making a circle. I folded it in half, we're making a circle. And then I'm gonna, just going to cut these things. And I'm going to try and keep that center right there, um, the size of the top of my cylinder. And you can use a lot of different kinds of cylinders for this. You can use uh, cocktail shakers. They don't have the holes though, so you have to figure out how to put holes in it. Um, but there's 
a lot of different things. Sherry Berry says, Jody, I was going to ask for a list, LOL. Now I <laughs> will just need to get the kit because I know there will be instructions, right? Yes, yes. there will be instructions. Um, and obviously the, it has the materials list, but there will also be, oh, there's some, the instructions have some photographs of different ways you can start stringing up your, uh, you know, different like starter ideas for how you can um, string up your, your platform and things. Cheryl okay. also, sorry, I'm gonna interrupt okay, you because go ahead. that's what I do. Cheryl also asks, what is the gauge of the wire, did you say? I so no, off the top of my head, I'm going to say 18 gauge, um, but I'm trying to think if it's sold, if stainless steel wire, if it said on the thing, it feels like 18 gauge to me. <laughs> so probably I wouldn't go thinner than 18 gauge. I'd go 18 or 16. Um, Oh, might be 20. Yeah, it feels like 18. Shelia also asks, uh, are those notches just the width of the cutting blade? Yes, they are. And what happens is um, I have a big, t a great big tile saw. So I actually put these up on a brick and so that they're level, like they go straight into the blade rather than if you put them on the, the tile um, sled, I guess. Then when you cut, you get a very shallow, like diagonal cut, and you want a vertical cut. So I elevate it and then feed it very carefully just in. And it just has to be far enough to, um, you know, to hold on to the wire. So you can put a whole sheet of shelf paper on here and just fold it down and staple it, but you'll lose that um, diagonal swirl of wire because you'll have a lot of shelf paper and it, it will just be kind of bunched up. So what I do is I start by holding this down and I'll turn it this way so you can actually see. So I, I follow that paper down to where it leaves, to where the wire leaves the cylinder and then I do a little tear there and then I staple it there. And then I go to the next one and you can see, actually this one we're gonna tuck right under there. So you'll see what happens is you get about every other one is going to line up with a wire and then you um, fold it and staple it. And it's a little bit of like shelf paper origami here. It does, this is a very complicated, it's not complicated. It's a little time consuming to set it up. But the idea here is that you'll have a shape that nobody else has. So hopefully it's worth the, the time uh, investment. Stephanie asks, Jody, can I use copper wire or does it have to be stainless steel? I have so much copper wire lying around here. Watching you from the middle of the night from Germany. Oh, jeez, go to bed. <laughs> don't go to bed. Okay, don't go to bed. We're you delighted need sleep. you're here. We are. I'm so glad um, you're enjoying it. You can use copper wire, but the thing with copper wire is it's going to probably only survive one firing, so you'll have to redo it. And sometimes this can be used twice, sometimes it can't. It just depends on how your glass like rolls, right? Also, if you buy our wonderful kit, you get a little spool oh, of stainless yeah, it steel comes with wire. wire. So that's Isn't included. That swanky. <laughs> it's a swag kit, right? <laughs> so, but you, yeah, you can use copper. Okay. Uh, guest five three five asks, does the floor tile need to be unglazed? Um, that's. It doesn't have to be unglazed. That's why I flip it over, though is because then I use the unglazed side. And see, you can see that here now is our wire at the, that leaves at the very top of the thing, so it's got a nice. Um, so I use glazed floor tile, but I flip it over so that um, the unglazed side is up, and you can probably see that right on the, the overhead there. Um, Oops, yes, we can. and my Sherry Berry says, Deep see out. Jody, you've already taught me something new. Floor tiles are new, isn't she clever? <laughs> Floor tiles are, oh, the hardware department is awesome. <laughs> yes, she practically lives there, I swear. <laughs> the, the running joke is, do you want to go to the hardware store with me? Our yeah. home away from home? Right, one time there was a week that we went every single day, sometimes twice in one day. Yes, sometimes twice in one day. <sighs> okay, so can you see here now where we've got, 
we've got all of our paper folded down, except we still have some wire exposed, right? And that's going to happen because we're folding a large volume of paper around a cylinder, but we have things, elements that are snaking out, that are spidering out. So this is where you can use all of your scrap shelf paper that you've been hanging on to forever. And don't tell me that you don't hang on to it because I know you do. I think she's just projecting just <laughs> a little bit. Nope, every glass artist I know has a box uh, of fiber uh, paper and shelf paper scrap. Sure. So you just fold it in half there and then um, so you can staple it on. So this way now we have a continuous coverage of the wire, right, like this. If you have an extra piece that's hanging out here, you can always also use it to staple um, over. So I'm just using regular staples. Somebody's gonna ask that. And course. they will burn, they do oxidize when you uh, fire them, but um, these are gonna be so far down the wire that they probably won't touch the glass so much. Now, if they are going to touch the glass, you can um, use bead release or kiln wash and just put a little dot on there on the staple. And the kit comes with bead release just in case. Let's cut to a shot of our wonderful kit because that's so super fun. So you can fun. see that. Okay, so once we have everything set up, then we can put our glass on it and slump it. So this, do we have a question? We do have, we okay. have a few questions. All right. So Becky says, watching from the UK, love your work. Thank you for sharing your innovative ideas. Awesome, hi Becky. Okay. And then guest 387 <laughs> asks, do we need to worry about the glass sticking to the glass as it slumps? Um, the glass sticking to the glass? Can you It will need a little elaborate slightly because I'm not 100% sure what your yes. question is. And Sherry Berry asks, what are the height of the formers in the kit? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, the stainless steel cylinder is five and a half inches and the wire cage is six inches tall. Uh, the shelf, the ceramic tile is it looks like it's about a fat quarter of an inch thick. And then it also comes, the kit comes with four little pieces of fire brick to elevate with your platform and they're an inch. So including glass, you would have for the tallest, you'd have the six inch cage, another half inch for glass plus platform and an inch. So you'd have seven and a half inches total with a quarter inch thick glass on top. So from the shelf to the top of the glass would be seven and a half inches for the tallest um, platform, for the tallest tower. I'm getting my terms mixed up. Okay, so do we have another question or can I? Uh, can no, I? we do not, please okay. continue. All right. I'm sure we'll have more though. Probably, so once you have that done, then you can put it in the kiln with your glass on it. And through the magic of television. <laughs> <laughs> Through the magic of television, we have this. So this is the, um, it has been transported, so of course you're seeing a little bit of uh, fiber paper disintegration. Um, this is the same web setup that we just used right there. And you can see on the overhead, we do have a little bit of a spiral flare. You can see like it's taller here and it works its way down taller here and then it does separate a little bit so let's take this off and see what we think okay so the idea of these this setup is so that you can vary the floral shapes that you make right because I'm sure you have a floral former I have about 5,000 and but they're always exactly the same and so I kind of I just, I wanted something different than everybody else had. So that's the idea of this particular setup. So hopefully that will be useful. Um, are we ready for another version? Uh, real fast, we have okay. a question from Kathy. Okay. How wide is the platform? The platform is, look, I have a, a ruler right on my thing. Oh, um, 10 inches, it's 10 by 10. So it will be 10 this way, this way, and this way. It should be even. Well, no, it's 10 this way and 10, yeah, 10 inches. OK, 
Okay, ready? No more questions? No more questions. Okay. Let's do the next thing. Let's roll. Woo. Okay. Oh, oh so coming. did you see that I kiln washed the bottom of the, the, do you see that? See how this is kiln washed? So that's, instead of putting shelf paper on it, I just kiln wash those. And uh, it works pretty well. So I know someone's gonna ask this, so I'll tell you now. Um, so those cylinders, those stainless steel cylinders, you can kiln wash those too. They work better if you fire them first and then kiln wash them, obviously, because that's stainless steel for you. You can sand it some. It's already brushed, but it, anyway, it's got some kind of anti-fingerprint finish on it, so it, it doesn't hold the kiln wash. Um, you probably are not going to be able to, I haven't tried it because I have other floral formers, and, but you could probably not use it by itself because the glass will grab those circles. They will, um, the glass is going to grab in here when it slumps down. So if you need to, if you want to use this as a floral former, and you can, and it's actually pretty cool, um, but what you do is you just take your, so this is another way you can use this kit. And you can also do it with your um, cage if you want. Ooh, so Jody, we yes. have more questions. Okay, I'm ready. So from Shelia, in the UK there's a children's TV program called Blue Peter, famous for the phrase, here's one I made earlier while showing craft projects. Awesome. Yeah, she does that. And then from, <laughs> <laughs> from Nancy we have, thanks Jody for giving us more options to have unique work that no one else will have. Isn't she great? We have I can't. <laughs> I, you know how I feel about doing things the same as everybody else. I have a, you have a phobia. I something. have a small attitude problem about it. Right, and then Barbara says, do you think the forms could be cut down fit into a six inch high kiln? Um, I know that the cage one can. I'm, I'm not sure about the circle one, but if you decide to get the kit, please in the comments section, make a, com make a note and I will make sure that I do that for you before I ship it to you, okay? Because that way, just make sure you say how tall you need that to be. Okay. Uh, guest 387 uh, elaborates and says, how do we figure out how wide of a piece of glass to you so that will not stick to its sides as it slumps in the floor? Okay, gotcha. Thank you for elaborating on that. So what you would do, I don't have a ruler with me, but um, what you would do is you would measure from here, which we know is five and a half, and I actually do this with my ruler. I just fold it over the top like this and then measure from here to here. So I know that this is a five and a half inch tall piece. So it's five and a half inches plus, see my thing is a ruler here, three inches wide. So that's 10, 11. We could make, use the very biggest piece of glass that we could use is a 14 inch circle. So that would be how you would, um, how you would estimate that. The circle that we looked at right here was, I believe, 12 inches. So you can see that you can, you could actually get a little bit more glass on there without any, any trouble. Um, Aussie56 asks, how big is the diameter of the glass circle? Um, that one was 12 inches. Um, and we do have other sizes on here, but that one is 12. So if you're using this, this or the cage just as a floral former, you don't need the platform. Um, you can just put it straight on your shelf. I'm just gonna leave it there because it's there. Um, what I usually do is take a piece of shelf paper or fiber paper, either one, and fold it and then start to, um, to do kind of an origami thing with it. So, uh, Nancy says, I love that attitude, do your own thing. She really does, <laughs> and all things. Right. And if you're just joining us, hello, we're Mondo Market TV. Uh, this is the Hourglass. We're doing fun slumping things. I'm also gonna mention that we're doing a fun, exciting surprise giveaway. Oh, and I, I can say what it is. Do we wanna? That's no fun. It, it's a tiny version of this. Oh. It's a mini, Cheater. I know, it's a, it's a mini slumping web. So it's a six inch tile and a three inch tall small cage and some stainless steel wire and a little platform elevator and uh, some slumping sticks. So 
How do they win this? Yes, how do you win this? Fantastic, a surprise list, mini slumping mold. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so I forgot to bring it. Uh, I know, so I'm human. That's how, it, that's just how <laughs> it goes. So what you can do to enter is you can share, you can comment, you can just like, like participate in this chat tell us how much you love us we do love that because <laughs> we're, we Cause we're like you. that right we, we love you we love interacting with you so send in questions that will give you extra entries and at the end of our hour with our little hourglass we'll, we, we will be announcing a winner so stay tuned all right so once we have this folded at least somewhat how we want it to be then what i do is go around and start stapling it into shape and once you have it stapled into sh a shape that you like It operates just very similar to the slumping web. Now the difference is when your glass slumps down over this um, fiber paper form, it is going to collapse it a little bit, um, which is where the web comes in handy because it holds it in a, a more firm shape. That's actually sort of what started me down this whole web path is because um, I wanted it to stay this shape, right? I made this thing and I wanted it to stay this shape when the glass slumped. So I needed something underneath it um, to hold it. And so that's, that's sort of where we went with that. But if you are, you can use these just as plain floral formers, but you wanna use them with paper like this, staple around it, it works great like that. John says, love this idea of using the stapler. Uh, Kara <laughs> says, hello. And Barbara asks, what is the name of the kiln paper you are using? Um, I don't think I can say on camera, but I will tell you it is the one that is on the far end of the alphabet, not the beginning of the alphabet for the maker's name. Um, and I think we can tell you in chat after the show, um, but hopefully that will be enough. I love this little charade that we play, right? Where we, we guess the right. Okay, just two words, TV. sounds like. <laughs> right. Uh, Kara says, Jody, I love the freedom of thought you show. You've made me braver in my glasswork. Thank oh, you. Thank you. That's a huge compliment. I very much appreciate that. Uh, Beverly says, and the staples won't stick to the glass as it slumps? Um, I try and staple it far enough down. Now, you occasionally you do get a staple mark. Let me see. I noticed. Uh, yeah. Was, is right it on there. this one? Yeah, it is. I think so. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's do put that on close up and yes. you can see. See right here? This one did make a whoop. Which, which camera is close up here? That one over there. Over there? <laughs> yes. Down. Okay. Down. Oh, there it is. Ooh. You see right here. Okay, so that one, that one did make a mark on the glass. So what you can do is just give it a little dab with kiln wash before you slump over it. If you have one that's tall enough, usually I try and staple down towards the bottom so that I don't have um, an overlap of the glass and the staples. Uh, Margaret, Margaret asks, um, Jody, I need to head to present to a high school. Will this be rerun later? Yes, it will. You can always watch this on MondoMarketTV.com. It's free and there's... And then I think they're archived pretty much forever. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to promise forever because forever is a really long time. Right. But they are available for any time you want to watch it. And it's okay for you to mention brands. Oh, it is? Awesome, okay, so the, the uh, shelf paper that I prefer is actually Papyrus, made by Spectrum. I like it, it just, it's um, thicker, so I can manipulate it more and do more things with it. I just, I like it a little bit better. So, um, let's look at uh, a wire and wire setup, and then we will look at how to use the, um, some ideas with the slumping sticks. Uh, Kathy asks, 
Oh, want the mini? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jody, how about just making a mini for sale? Lots of us have small kids. Oh, oh, you know, I'm sorry. I always forget that. But yes, we could do that. Um, so check back. We will have that on Mondo Market um, probably tomorrow. We can definitely do that. And but if you share a million times right now, you might be able to just yes. win a free one. If you share, comment, oh. just tell all your friends to <laughs> come and join, then you will be entered. Even over the not over. glass ones, and they'll right. be like, just seriously, lying. again with the glass thing? <laughs> yeah, but you get cool prizes. <laughs> you can promise them a piece of artwork. Yes. Right. Um, my Seriously, my family's like, seriously, again with the glass? Uh, yeah. Uh, for another so, holiday? Uh, Jocelyn asks, is the biggest difference between the cylinder and the cage that the base is circular versus square? That is, um, that is a good question, and it's not the only thing that's different. The other thing is the, s the holes are bigger, um, obviously, because they're square instead of circles. So you can do some slightly different things. Like, um, let me finish this, and I will show you. Uh, um, but you can use the little slumping stick things that I was talking, that I was showing you earlier. And they don't work with the cylinder so much. So Debbie asks, I'm wondering if you could staple or so steel rods into fiber paper for a more reusable mold. Oh. Great, now she's not going to sleep. That's brilliant. Um, you heard it here, folks. <laughs> someone else's brilliant. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Um, I know, I'm just poking fun at you. That's actually a really interesting idea. I have not tried it. I have dipped steel rods in bead release, and that works pretty well, but I hadn't even thought about doing any sort of that. I wonder, hmm. Okay, well, obviously, <laughs> I have work to do when I get home Great. tonight. Uh, Sherry Berry says, Jody, I hate to ask, but can you get a shorter silverware holder for the five and a half inch height in kit? Um, if we can't get a shorter one, I think I can cut it down. Ooh, we do um, have swanky saw. Yeah, I remember I do have that saw with that metal thing on it. So this is, um, this is using the square one, and you can see that I have done, sorry, I got distracted by something shiny over here. You can see I've done a two-level uh, thing here. Let's put that over here. Okay. So. I have two wires that fan out from a top layer on two sides of the square and two wires that fan out on a top layer or on a, a lower layer. So this is, excuse me, just one of the things that you can do with the cage um, idea. And this is actually really fun. So let me show you, um, I don't think I have a slumped version of this one here. Will you hand me that square? Yeah, that one. All right. So this is one that works particularly well with a square. And this is, um, it's very similar to this, but this, the wires are all at the same height instead of half of them are down and half of them. Can you see that one? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you can see, so this would be a, an example of the. And it then does I, look like a spider web. It does look like a spider web, isn't that fun? And then um, what I do here is just wrap the, um, the shelf paper around. And you can with the, the cage, which is kind of cool is you can actually wrap your fiber paper right around the cage and then poke the wire through the paper and then cover it. So you don't have that trying to fold a big circle of paper around and you use a lot less paper. So that's, that is kind of a cool feature of the, the cage versus the, um, the cylinder. Kat says, thank you for doing this. I have a small kiln and most draping farms are too tall for my kiln. I can't wait to try this. <laughs> you should send us your results. Uh, yes. We're so excited to we see We do them. love to see that. And you can post them on the Facebook group, the I Love Arts and Crafts group. Oh, I, I need that. Don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> come back. Because um, I especially love to see. And it amazes me because I can come up with this idea, but then... You guys take it and, and, and multiply it in ways that I never even considered, and it's like crazy cool from an instructor point of view to see that happen. It's just, it is really, really cool. Debbie says, you've definitely improved and explored these techniques since the course where you taught this. Right? But it had so much promise that I couldn't leave it alone. <laughs> so I had to kind of go, okay, what else can I do with this? Um, so, and that's one of the things, one of the reasons why 
I finally agreed to do um, a show format like this is because I can actually spend more time on one thing, right? Like just on one particular topic. Um, and I like the idea of being able to do that. So this, what I'm doing right now, is putting, I'm just running wires right here because I want it to stay put. <laughs> so I'm making it, I'm just like tethering it down so that it will stay while I do other stuff with it. So Nancy asks, okay. love your willingness to try to experiment and share the results. <laughs> yes, well, we're always excited. ready to experiment Ooh, and try the results. Uh -huh. Okay. Aussie 56 says, dipping wires in kiln wash does work. Makes it thick though. I do that for jewelry with kiln pins. That's a good idea. Oh yeah, with kiln pins. So that's nichrome. They're just, the kiln pins are thick nichrome. That's a really good idea. So as an alternative to stainless, um, you could do that. Uh, Kat says, the web will also prevent the glass from overdraping, which I've had happen creating a vase rather than a bowl shape. Right. Yeah, I think you yes. had one of those the other day, didn't you? Um, it happens. So this, we can do this right here. I probably should have stapled it before I put it on, but we're going to... Jocelyn says, we're gonna do, do you ever uh, connect wire to wire a la a spider web? Um, oh, wouldn't that be fun? I have done that, but not for a long time. Um, the first time I did that, I, dra I did that with wires um, on the edges of my ceramic kiln. I have an octagon ceramic kiln. And so I ran wires back and forth and wove them together and, and draped right through. It, it was really super cool. And, um, and before you keep going, <laughs> you can try this at home with our wonderful kit. It, it includes wire, little kiln bricks. I don't actually know what's in this, but it's really cool. It's so the, we've got you the do kiln. too know what's in it. The kiln bricks, the, names the little slices of fire brick are the to elevate the platform up just like this off of the kiln shelf. And what that does, the reason that you would even think about doing that is it gives um, some space for your wires to hang out underneath there so that you don't have to worry about the wires poking up towards your glass while it's fusing, right? Because that that can happen and then you have this big spaghetti mess with the wire sticking out of it. Well, we do love spaghetti. Right, all right. And then it also comes with, um, oh, we haven't even talked about this stainless steel zip ties yet. Ooh, the those were swanky. They are actually <laughs> really cool. <laughs> well, then aren't you glad that when you buy this course you get some of Jody's favorite fancy things? Shiny things. Ooh, she does love shiny things. They all know that. Okay, so my staple is not wanting to cooperate. <laughs> okay, here we go. So sometimes the staples, you have to go in there and bend them down a little bit so they stay. Okay. So I've cut my, my um, shelf paper too large for this, and I did that on purpose because... If you cut your shelf paper only as wide as the cage, when you put the other side down, you sometimes get a gap on the corners. And so this way, you can see I can wrap that paper around the corner when I put the, um, this side on. Okay, mm. and see, so now we have a continuous coverage, but that was not nearly as much shelf paper as we used for the, the circle cylinder. So this, I, I like squares, but this that is another advantage of the, the thing. So I would be very interested to know if you guys, the, everyone who's on chat, how many people have small kilns, like nine inches-ish. Um, I'm just very curious, because people ask me all the time, what size of kiln should I buy? And I'm not sure what to tell people. Like, do you think that, do you like your small kiln? Is it too small? I'd be interested to know. So I will review the, the chat. Yes, Sherry see. Berry says, Jody, I'm so glad you decided to do this. Yes, every, it took me a long time to come around, I'll have to admit. <laughs> but I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Gretchen also, Gretchen says. Hey Gretchen. I'm, Woo, hi 
Hi, Gretchen. It was Gretchen's birthday a couple days ago. <gasps> Happy birthday, Gretchen. Uh, says, I'm giggling at the dynamic between you two. Aww. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, Terry says, great ideas. De and Debbie says, stainless steel zip ties. What? Aren't I know, right? Fun? And then uh, I love it. I love it. I love John it, I love says, it. "I can't get, for, I can't wait for you to get to the zip ties." Okay, so <laughs> let's do the the slimping sticks first because there are some things you need to know about that. Okay, so my idea with these was, what if we put these through both sides of the cage to create a spiky, spiny, slumpy thing, right? doesn't even have a real name so these what we'll do is is we'll um, nip these with tile nippers they're pretty fragile so plan on these not lasting forever this this is one of those things that uh, you know you use them and they're awesome and we have two graduated sizes but we know they're not <laughs> gonna last forever and if you share comment whatever we will include some of these in the giveaway because they're just so cool they are pretty cool actually so and i think okay think i might be able to use them for glass weaving but i haven't yet because they look like they would be the right size so So things you need to remember on this is these are slumping over ceramic is a little tricky, right? Because um, glass contracts and let's see, glass contracts faster than ceramic. So when the glass is cooling, it has a tendency to grab the ceramic. So um, what I did with mine is I'll show you how, what I did and what I should have done. Um, because what I did is cool, but maybe not as effective as it could be. Don't jo you love that I show you what not to do? Yes, it's very helpful. <laughs> Jocelyn says, what are they made of? This is, it's actually the same ceramic tile. I just cut it into super skinny strips um, because I love my tile saw. And once I start sawing things, then I kind of start going, what if I, what if I saw everything under the sun? Yes. Uh, Becky says, it's my birthday today. Happy birthday, oh, Becky. Hey. You know, Becky, all the best people were born in August. It is yeah. a true scientific fact. You only say that because you were born in August. You were too. I won't deny that. <laughs> Uh, but she continues and says, I normally use fiber blanket for draping. So cool uh -huh. to see you using paper instead. Um, and I have not used, I mean, I do use the thicker paper because, um, because it holds up better. Ah, okay. <laughs> Debbie says, some of the best things don't have real names. I agree. Like we just go on with it and figure it out. Okay. So this was my idea, is that we would do like descending size cross pieces, right? So they would stick out and I wanted them to make step shaped, uh, some step shaped shapes. Well, that was really clever. <laughs> <laughs> so let me show you what actually happened. Um, and this is, a, this is a fused one with all of the pieces in it, or a Ooh, slumped one. That looks... It does it's look pretty sad. cool, right? Oh, and then what I did with the, wait, rewind. Uh, <laughs> okay, before that though. Do the sound effects help? Yes, the sound effects help. I actually, have, wait, can you hand me that tube of uh, bead release? This one? No, this one, all right. Out of the kit, okay. So I get took- Get the kit now and you'll get one of your own. Right, get the bead release. So I use bead release for all sorts of stuff. But I covered these guys. So bead release is um, the same ingredients as kiln wash, but in different proportions. So it's thicker and it kind of is crumblier, if that's even a word. 
but I'm knowing that my glass is going to contract around this, I put a really thick coat on there, so hoping that when the glass contracted, it would have a little bit of cushion. And I guess you could probably wrap these in fiber paper. It didn't even dawn on me to do that, but you could totally you wrap me, these. Do you want me to write that down? Nah, you, you could totally wrap these in fiber paper and that would give it enough cushion also. Okay. Okay, you can put that back. Thank okay. you. My lovely assistant. Okay, so here, here's the fused one. Okay, so you can see we had some success with it where it sort of held out and we had some issues. So if you look right here, you can see, um, oh, I'm moving too quickly. If you look right here, you can see that there is a little piece that popped out because I didn't have enough bead release there, right? So knowing this, I know that I'm probably gonna have to break these out to get the glass off because you remember what we said about them being disposable, right? That was exciting. Oh, stick with me, babe. <laughs> <laughs> we got yeah. all kinds of exciting uh, things to do. Debbie says, I love your bead release. Oh, that's good. She makes it. Yeah. I make it myself, actually. Ooh, she makes it herself. Right? That fun? It's made with love. <laughs> <laughs> now, you could still use these smaller pieces also, you know, again. But I'm, I'm breaking them because I need you to, to get the glass off because I knew that it was gonna be a kind of a tricky shape. But I do like to try things, so I tried it anyway. And um, Sue says, could you use scotch tape instead of staples? No, don't. <laughs> Sorry, that sounded really firm, didn't it? Nope. Um, scotch tape in the kiln is a really bad idea. Um, it burns off and makes just terrible. Oh, that was an awful sound. Sorry. It makes terrible, terrible, terrible fumes. So it's better if you don't use tape in the kiln. Um, it, I accidentally put a piece of scotch tape in once and then researched it and went, oh, good. I know. It's not, it's, uh, You'll get over it. Brace yourself. <laughs> Whew, that was. Horrendous. All right. I'll see if I can I break it. To everyone. Oh, now see. Now I broke my glass. All Good right. <laughs> Trying to avoid the squeak. All right. Let's do this last one. I'm not sure people can see, but look at this like massive chunk of glass she managed okay. to break off. Okay. All right. Ah, okay, little messy. It's a little, but, she says. <clears throat> look at this. So you can see we do wow. have some, and where'd my piece go? Your okay, chunk. my chunk that I was trying to avoid making the, the squeaky sound. That one? There we go. All right. So, um, what I would do differently is I would um, not do the the uh, bars straight across, I would do them at a, di at a slight angle. And so I'll show you how I, I'm gonna do it next time. Okay, so what I would do next time is do them more like this. So it's similar to the web, but um, these are, uh, stiffer so that you don't have to um, wire them down, right? They are just, you can just put them right in there and gravity will hold them in place. And then you can pull, fold your paper right over them. So that's, the, that's what I would do with the, the little sticks. But you can also um, do, if you have two cages. Two, would you like? Nope, I have one. Okay. If you have two cages. <laughs> Um, you Vicki can. Young says, how do we find out your recipe for bead release? Company secret, babe, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's a closely guarded family secret. Uh-huh. Uh, a different Vicki says, 
Uh, good to know that this stuff happens to Jody too. I always have to learn the hard way. Oh, it happens to me all the time. And I, so notoriously, Vicki, what happens is, um, so if you have two cages, you can do things like this with your, your little uh, Don't get distracted. Things, I know. Um, what always happens to me is the first time I do it, it works perfectly. And I'm super excited. And then I commit to a big project doing said thing perfectly, right? Like for instance, candy dishes. I, I took a contract for 350 candy dishes. And the first one was spectacular. The sample one was stunning. And then I could never do it again. <laughs> And that, that happens, so we just, we move on. Um, Nancy, okay, oh, sorry, sorry, okay. okay. Nancy says, what a benefit we can get from Jody's experiment. <laughs> I know, right? You don't have to I, do it I usually have at least one experiment in um, every kiln load of stuff. So my latest thing, I don't know if you saw the shopping video or not, Ooh. which was hilarious, but not for reasons that, I mean, I thought it was hysterical. Uh, mostly for what was going on in the background, all the other people, it was very amusing. But one of the things that I got on my shopping trip was um, a gigantic box of test tubes, borosilicate test tubes. So I have been fusing test tubes, like at all different temperatures to see what they do and what I can do with them. And it's very interesting. Um, I haven't come to a conclusion so far whether I like them or not. Um, they have possibilities, but it's, I'll have to keep working on it before I can uh, Vicki Young tell says, you about it. are they regular tile or a shelf for kiln? Are they regular tile, right? Yeah, these are regular tile. I do have one that has a kiln shelf, um, and you can use that. The thing that you need to remember with kiln shelves is they're thicker than tiles, so you need to take that into account in your height calculation. Um, just so you make sure that you do it right. Okay, let's do zip ties. Woo, yay. We are getting so, close to being out of time. I'm I know, looking look at my hourglass. Woo, hourglass. Right. Look at that. That's fun. There's a, here, let's turn that so you can actually see it. <laughs> so uh, if you're just joining us, we're here on Mondo Market TV with the, the hourglass. It's a fun show. <laughs> We're doing slumping mats. You can enter to win our giveaway. We have these. We these have a mini slumping kit. Mini slumping kit. It's super fun. With I forgot a, the yep. name of it. Six inch. <laughs> it's a six inch tall tile with a three inch tall. So it will fit in a small kiln. It will be, it's and speaking a, of, you can buy the full sized one, which will gain. I think it will gain you extra entries. I you think you I think you get extra points and I then I think you get extra entries yep. if you buy our full sized kit which is super cool it's got the full tile that she's using as well as the other materials she's using including right. stainless steel zip ties we're just yep. about to cover and here they are so um, I bought these at the hardware store of course because the I buy everything store at the hardware store um, and so these guys what they are they're they're actually like the craziest cool design. I had to take one apart to see how it worked because anyway. So if you look right on the top, it's got, it's just like a regular zip tie, but there's no holes in it, right? And it's stainless steel. So you put it through and it, you can put it through one way, but when you pull on it, it's, it is tight and it won't come back apart, right? It's really strong. So you can use these to strap things around your cylinder, but the way it works is really awesome. <laughs> In there is the tiniest little steel ball ever, and it just is in that, that little lump right there. So when you pull it back, the ball rolls and wedges it tight. It's like, it's really cool. Okay, but you can also just cut it off and use the stainless steel straps. So what is what I like to do with these guys is put them um, on the cylinder. You can use them on the cage also, but you can do these, so besides just zip ties, of course, because you can also use them as zip ties, but you can also use them to give you some um, more organic shapes than just the wire because they are sturdy enough that they will hold fairly well unsupported and you can 
It's terribly exciting. Nancy says the shopping tour was spectacular. <laughs> uh, it I was think, funny. Aren't we going to do a little bit more, but with more like real sh thrift stores instead of the well? Really cool I think so. So the next one that we're the next on on location video we're doing actually is a studio tour. Ooh, so that be fun I am on notice that I need to get that place cleaned up. So look for that and I think that will be featured as a bonus for the next class okay so one of the things you can do here Debbie says okay those stainless steel tiles deserve a wow <laughs> I agree I think you should all go into chat and give us wow. a wow it's funny it's such a wow moment aren't they fun so, so ah okay <laughs> I know they want to pop back in so you can crimp them too all right so if you look at the overhead Oh, they're hard to see on the overhead. Okay. No. Well, you can see them. Here, maybe you can see it better uh, if they're tilted. Yes. Do you want to put it on a little bit close up? Mm. Do you think that would help? Mm. Mm. Let's try it. Okay. Different we can try it on the close up. Oh yeah. Yeah. See, look at see, that. See, look at that. So you can do um, you can do these fun shapes. Now, do keep in mind a couple things with these. They're not super strong stainless steel, so they are going to be limited numbers of firings will be available for that. But, um, and then the other thing is they will stick, so you do need to kiln wash them or um, spray them or bead release them or whatever, or you know, staple paper onto them. But I really like those to give you some, um, just some more organic shapes that are maybe hard to get with the wire um, because they do like to to stay in shape. Yes. Okay, right. do we have questions? Because my hourglass is running out, baby. Yep, and <laughs> we're running out. So, so Jocelyn okay. asks, what are these ties called at the hardware store and their original purpose? Oh, they're called stainless steel zip ties. I think they might be for some automotive thing, like, uh, I don't I don't know. Cars. Car thing. <laughs> like maybe holding mufflers on or wires together or something like that. Uh -huh. I just um, wander through whatever parts department I'm in. And so they they were just called stainless steel zip ties. So um, they seem Gretchen to be. Asks, oh, can, maybe cable oh, ties. Goodness. Okay. Anyway. Gretchen asks, can you do a video of you actually cleaning your studio? <laughs> no. I mean, you inspire <laughs> us in so many ways. I think oh should, my gosh. Um, There's a lot of crying. <laughs> I don't think we should do that. Oh, you don't. <laughs> That's fair. So, because our hourglass is our time like is running out within seconds, our winner for the giveaway oh, awesome. of the ceramic the mini, tiles right, and the, the mini, mini thing, thing is John Ferrando. Awesome. Please send us your mailing information to info at mondomarkettv.com, and we will get that shipped to you. Oh, awesome. That was awesome. So we'll be back in two weeks. I think our next show is September 4th. Woo! Um, and I'm pretty excited. I have a brand new thing to show you. I'm super you excited. You always have a brand new thing. I know. I'm we super have, excited. We uh, have two more questions. This okay. was way more popular than I thought it was. Thank you all for watching. <laughs> Kathy says, uh, my hubby is impressed. Uh, stainless awesome. steel wire ties. He wants to go shopping. The, yeah, you better get your own package because... Right, yeah. Sure. Yeah, and they're John, pretty cool. Okay. It says uh, these zip ties are Greta. I think you great. Right? Yep, they um, are. And I'm going to weave them together and make a mesh melt. Ooh, that's a good Ooh, idea. Can you send me a picture? If you don't want to share it publicly, I would love to just see a, a picture of that. You could send me it privately. That would be really cool. Okay. All right. Our timer is oh, out. Our timer is out. <sighs> so sad. So sad. <laughs> So, we've, this is Mondo Market TV. Thank you all for joining us on The Hourglass. It's been so fun. This is Jody McCraney Rusho. My name is Logan. We were presenting this amazing kit that you can get at mondomarkettv.com. It's so fun. So, go there, buy it. And we'll see, see you, you next time. time.